All right, this is First Lieutenant Devon Estelle, 101 BSB, First Brigade, Big Red One. From our team to yours, Happy Veterans Day! Welcome back to Mad Money Salute to the Troops. To all the brave men and women who served, we thank you ahead of Veterans Day. What do we do with Clorox now that it's broken out above $100 a share? Here's a truly iconic American consumer packaged goods company with some classic dominant brands like Clorox bleach and cleaning products, Glad Bags, Kings for Charcoal, Fresh Step Cat Litter, Hidden Valley Salad Dressing, Brita Water Filters, and Burt's Bees Personal Care Products, among many others. Clorox sports a solid 2.9% yield. A month and a half ago, the company announced that it's getting out of Venezuela, which has been a truly horrendous market where the government's flirting with outright communism. At the end of October, October, Clorox delivered a solid, better-than-expected quarter. But the best thing about the story is the stellar management and execution of Donald Knauss. He's Clorox's fantastic chairman and CEO, a man who transformed this company from a pastiche of disparate brands into a single business united by a common vision. Knauss is no stranger to leadership before his career in business. He was an artillery officer in the Marine Corps, a captain, serving in the 1st Battalion of the 12th Marine Regiment from August of 76 to January of 1981. That's why I'm thrilled to have Don Knauss here with us ahead of Veterans Day and the 239th birthday of the Marine Corps to thank him for his excellent service both in the Marines and at the helm of Clorox. Clorox, by the way, leads by example when it comes to hiring veterans as they make up about 8% of their U.S. employee population. Mr. Knauss, welcome back to Mad Money. Great Good to Jim. see you, Don. Hey, thank great you. To be with you. Thank, you, Jim. thank you. First, thank let's you. get right to it. You hire veterans yes. because they are good for business, not just because you're doing the right thing. Right? Absolutely. You know what, what we find with veterans, Jim, is they have, one, a mission orientation. They know how to get the job done. Right. And that comes first. Second, they know how to work in teams, diverse teams, many times across different branches of service. And they've got a work ethic. They actually show up. And showing up is a big deal. Now, that was your decision. Uh, have you been surprised that other companies who perhaps don't have CEOs with military background have such a dearth of military, uh, of, of ex-service yeah. people? Yeah, I think it's, in general, I think it's just an awareness issue, right. Jim. I think they don't recognize that how much talent is out there, especially in the last decade, as more and more people have, have come off active duty. So I think that awareness is starting to build. I just heard, for example, Jamie Dimon speak this week. J.P. Morgan's hired right. 7,000 veterans in the last two years. So I think it's really getting to be a sweep, and I think shows like yours and your ag advocacy for veterans is really helping. Well, thank you. Thank you. If I did that, that's great. I know my dad will appreciate it, Veteran World Absolutely. War II. All right, now let's talk about the amazing transformation you made with Clorox. A lot of people say, listen, if you don't have this huge revenue growth, your stock can never move. Right. You have consistently gotten the most out of your products, 5.2 to 5.5 revenues last six right. years. Stock has doubled when you include dividends. How yeah. is it possible to double the value of a stock without having, say, 20, 30 percent revenue growth? Well, I think one of the things, and you and I have talked about this in the past, Jim, one of the things I started when I got there about eight years ago is we had to really increase the dividend in double digits. Right. I wanted to get more cash back to shareholders. One of the things that's really interesting about Clorox, it has tremendous cash flow. Right about 11% of net revenue in free cash. So we wanted to get more of that back to shareholders. So I think at one point we were almost a 3.7 yield. So we, when you're looking at a 10-year treasury of about two, two and a quarter, we became a really nice bond, if you will, a really safe bet. And we were churning out about 2 to 3% top line growth. Right. And we hit a little bit of a snag in the last year, but we're coming back. As you said, we had a better quarter, 3% yeah. 3 currency neutral uh, revenue growth. So I see that starting to continue. And I think it's been because of some good innovation across these brands. But it's also something you uh, taught me early on in your tenure, which is that this Clorox isn't just a cleaning liquid. It is also right. a wonder drug, so to speak. You know, I, I kind of use this analogy in our company. What aspirin is to analgesics, sodium hypochlorite bleach or Clorox bleach is to disinfecting. It is, it is a wonder product when you think about it. Uh, for the last hundred years, it's been in our water system, and we have no cholera, we have no typhoid, we have no more waterborne illnesses. I think the interesting thing about bleach, Jim, is that organisms can't adapt to it. It's not like antibiotics. It completely destroys the cell structure of bacteria and viruses, so there's nothing left to adapt. And when I went to the CDC's website to see what worked against Ebola, it's your wipes and your liquid. Yeah. 
Yeah, in fact, if you look at the CDC guidelines, they say any EPA registered disinfectant, which obviously <laughs> Clorox bleach and, and wipes are, will be effective against those kinds of uh, bacteria and viruses. So have you seen a bit of a spike in sales at every hospital? I know it's been consistent since H1N1. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. In the quarter, Jim, we just finished, we didn't see any bump. Of course, the, the real media coverage in the U.S. didn't start till mid-late September. Right. We did see a bump, however, in the last four weeks. If you look at October, our wipes business is up over 20%. So you do see a bump. Now, some wow. of that is the normal cold and flu merchandising we do, but clearly the Ebola scare did frighten people. But you have also said that because of your social media and your analysis and your incredible interest in the way customers are, are uh, where the customers are, that you've been yep. able to ship Clorox where it's yep. really needed. If, I wonder whether you didn't have to ship it to Texas when yep. uh, the outbreaks occurred. Well, it's interesting. We, we do look at um, social media. We look at tweets. We mm -hmm. look at Facebook, and we see where the incidence of chatter about disease right. is highest, and then we'll actually allocate uh, shipments into those zip codes and the stores that are in those zip codes. We've done that with Walmart and other customers. Now, you've also shown a bit of a savvy that I think that sometimes I wish our government had. You recognized at a certain point that Venezuela was just simply a failing country that you couldn't deal yeah. with, right? Now, that's, you're the only executive that has taken the tough decision to mm -hmm. do that. Yeah. Why did you do it, and why haven't others? Yeah. Well, Jim, about three years ago, the Venezuelan government put our products, most of our products, about 70% of them, under price controls. And of course, when inflation is running at 60 to 70% a year, what happened is, um, you know, we, our margins went from a, about a 35 to a 40 gross margin to negative territory. So we started losing tens of millions of dollars. So last year, for example, on a business of about $75 million, we lost $23 million. This year, we forecasted we were going to lose a little bit less. The government had promised us pricing. We met with the government 20 times between July of 12 and July of 14, telling them how bad our business situation was. We wrote them about 100 letters to various government officials detailing our P&L and what was going on with the business. We wanted to stay in Venezuela. We'd been there for almost 25 years. It got to the point where the losses were so significant, we could not take it anymore, frankly. We had been promised pricing in June. We thought it would rectify the situation. Right. That pricing never came until September, and it wasn't sufficient, and the losses continued. Well, you're always making the tough decision. Very quickly, qu a proudest moment, because this will be your last time with us, at, not as at Clorox, you'll be executive chairman, but as CEO. Yeah. You know, I, I think, really, it's the cultural change we've done at Clorox. As you said, we took a pretty disparate group right. of brands, and we put it under this health and wellness umbrella and made all of our brands relevant in one way or another against that. And I think I'm proud of the culture, how it's evolved to really a people-first culture. I, I kind of did something I guess you'd say was heresy when I first got there. I said to uh, our group and to a number of investors, our shareholders are not our most important constituency. Our consumers are not. Our customers are not. It's our people. Because if we don't have the best and the brightest engaged 110%, our shareholders are not going to be happy over the long term, our consumers are not going to be happy, and our customers. And that's really something that came out of the Marine Corps for me. It's, your, it's all about your people. It's not about you. Well, it sure did work. It worked great for shareholders. Everyone's pretty thrilled that it's over 100. You did a great job. Well, Fantastic. You. That's Don Knauss. He's a former artillery officer in the Marine Corps, a captain who served in the 1st Battalion of the 12th Marine Regiment and the chairman and CEO of Clorox, who did a fabulous job. Man, money's back after the break. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Don. Captain Daniel Sears, 244th Aviation Brigade, Joint Base McGuire-Dix-Lakehurst, I'd like to wish a happy Veterans Day to all of our men and women serving overseas and at home.